So I have effectively banned Hillary Clinton from my channel because, I mean, it's 2019 and I have a serious case of Hillary fatigue. She's not in power. Her politics are antiquated. She was defeated. I'm ready to move on, right? So whenever she is back in the news, I usually try to avoid talking about her. You know, when she falsely suggested that transgender people are some sort of new phenomenon, effectively erasing them from history, I bit my tongue, even though what she said there was disgusting. You know, when everyone was talking about her recently and the possibility of her jumping back in the 2020 race, I bit my tongue because, you know, I know what she's doing. She's just leaving these little hints of her possibly running, flirting with it, even though we know that that's not really going to happen. But she likes the mainstream media attention fawning over her. She loves the power and the admiration. So I don't want to be complicit. I don't want to be a useful idiot for Hillary Clinton and, you know, just allow her to continue to have this presence when, quite frankly, she's irrelevant. But anytime she does jump back into the news cycle, you know, it just reminds me once again how divisive and destructive she really is in American politics. So this is what she said this time, which has dominated headlines so much, like I almost, I, I can't ignore it because it's, it's that egregious, it's that harmful. This is what she said about Tulsi Gabbard. I'm not making any predictions, but I think they've got their eye on somebody who's currently in the Democratic <laughs> primary and are grooming her to be the third party candidate. She's a favorite of the Russians. They have a bunch of sites and bots and other ways of supporting her mm -hmm. so far. And that's assuming Jill Stein will give it up, which she might not because she's also a Russian right. uh, asset. Agent. Obviously, she made a claim with zero evidence to back it up. She said Tulsi Gabbard is a Russian asset and um, the evidence completely non-existent. And think about how absurd what she's saying is. So the implication is that Tulsi Gabbard uh, is going to run to be the presidential nominee in the Green Party if Jill Stein, in fact, you know, relinquishes power. Except there's two things wrong with that assertion, or that implication, rather. First of all, Tulsi Gabbard has already ruled out running for president under the banner of a third party. Second of all, Jill Stein isn't even running. So this is so far removed from reality that Hillary Clinton should be embarrassed. She should no longer be taken seriously whenever she has anything to say about politics. I mean, we should have written her off permanently after she lost to Donald Trump. She lost to the host of a reality television show. So we should have then just written her off and realized that this is someone who is politically incompetent, who we should not take seriously. But the media loves Hillary Clinton. She has a lot of people who adore her and worship her, a lot of Democratic Party loyalists who like her in the media. But normal Americans, they don't, they don't really see that. They view her as the establishment, and rightfully so, because she really is the embodiment of everything wrong with the Democratic Party and establishment party politics. And I think that Tulsi Gabbard, in a response, highlighted this. So Tulsi Gabbard said on Twitter, Great, thank you, Hillary Clinton. You, the queen of warmongers, embodiment of corruption and personification of the rot that has sickened the Democratic Party for so long, have finally come out from behind the curtain. From the day I announced my candidacy, there has been a concerted campaign to destroy my reputation. We wondered who was behind it and why. Now we know it was always you through your proxies and powerful allies in the corporate media and war machine. Afraid of the threat I pose. It's now clear that this primary is between you and me. Don't cowardly hide behind your proxies. Join the race directly. Now look, I have my disagreements and criticisms of Tulsi Gabbard. I don't support Tulsi Gabbard. The minute she moved away from Medicare for All, um, that's when I realized, okay, I, I don't have any interest in your campaign. That being said, um, a smear is a smear. And what Hillary Clinton did to Tulsi Gabbard is a smear, so she has absolutely every right to call it out. She's right. Hillary Clinton is the queen of corruption. And she's a warmonger. Hillary Clinton is is not just a bad politician, she's a bad person, right? She's an angry, narcissistic oligarch who just can't accept the fact that Americans aren't into her and she lost to someone as idiotic and moronic and buffoonish and childish as Donald Trump. I get it, I'd be salty too. I'd be bitter too if I lost to Donald Trump. But there are more fruitful ways to deal with that loss. And jumping back in to talk about politics in this divisive and destructive manner is not okay.
So what Tulsi Gabbard said here, I don't think Hillary Clinton wants to run again. Don't encourage her to run again for the love of God. I think essentially what Tulsi Gabbard is trying to communicate to everyone is that Hillary Clinton is the embodiment of the establishment and the establishment collectively is against Tulsi Gabbard. Therefore, you know, she's kind of using Hillary Clinton as a synonym for the establishment. And that makes sense. And there's also a criticism here. You know, you could say that I wish Tulsi Gabbard attributed this same line of attack to someone like Joe Biden, who is her primary opponent, who's also a corrupt warmonger. However, you know, it's still for her to defend herself here. I think this is important. She came with a really strong response. And this attack is better for Tulsi Gabbard than it is for Hillary Clinton. Like Hillary Clinton, she doesn't like Tulsi Gabbard, but by her criticizing Tulsi Gabbard in this intellectually lazy, hacky way. This just helps Tulsi Gabbard. Now people are rallying around Tulsi Gabbard. Someone like me who has lost interest in Tulsi Gabbard throughout the course of this primary, I'm forced to defend her because this smear is so egregious. Now, additionally, Tulsi Gabbard released a video detailing, you know, how she believes the smears against her in the mainstream media. This really all kind of leads back to Hillary Clinton. She's the lowest common denominator. And anyone who's in the mainstream news who constantly says that she is, you know, um, a Putin apologist or a Assad apologist, you know, it's all because people are still bitter that she didn't endorse Hillary Clinton in 2016. Take a look. People warned me in 2016 that my endorsement of Bernie Sanders would be the end of my quote unquote political career. They said Clinton will never forget that she and her rich and powerful friends, her allies in politics and in the media will make sure that you are destroyed. Well, there have been countless hit pieces full of smears against me from day one of this campaign. They've tried to destroy my reputation and my lifetime of service because I stood up to them. I've spent over 16 years of my life proudly serving in the Army National Guard. I still serve as a major today. I volunteered to deploy to the Middle East twice. I've served in Congress now for nearly seven years, serving on the Foreign Affairs Committee, the Armed Services Committee, the Homeland Security Committee, and I am not afraid to openly express my love for our country. But if they can falsely portray me as a traitor, then they can do it to anyone. And in fact, that's exactly the message that they want to get across to you. That if you stand up against Hillary and the party power brokers, if you stand up to the rich and powerful elite and the war machine, they will destroy you and discredit your message. But here is the truth. They will not intimidate us. They will not silence us. We are not here just to protest their corruption. I am running for president to take the Democratic Party and our country back from the corrupt elite. I'm running for president to bring about a new Democratic Party and new leadership that will fight for peace, fight for the people, and protect our planet. So what she's saying here is really interesting. It kind of um, legitimizes our worst concerns with the establishment. She says that she was warned about what would happen if she crossed the Clinton machine. She is smeared relentlessly. If you didn't fall in line and endorse Hillary Clinton in 2016, uh, and you chose to endorse Bernie instead, we will relentlessly smear you. And she's kind of proven right here. I mean, it's not just her. Back in 2017, when Keith Ellison was running to be the DNC chair, they were essentially saying that he was an anti-Semite. Now, of course, that's absurd. They tried to tie him to Louis Farrakhan and whatnot, but Keith Ellison endorsed Bernie Sanders, so he was also smeared. So the way that I see this is I remember all of the people who endorsed Bernie in 2016. They hold a special place in my heart, right? You know, Raul Grijalva, even though he's with Warren this time, uh, Keith Ellison, Tulsi Gabbard, they all endorsed Bernie Sanders in 2016, and that meant something to me. So I remember what they did. That was meaningful. So if I remember them endorsing Bernie, of course, people on the opposite side of the aisle are going to remember her endorsing Bernie, but they're going to view her negatively and maybe never forget about that and always hold a grudge against Tulsi Gabbard because of that. But at the end of the day, this is a smear, this is egregious, and we have to call this out. And another issue with this is that, you know, not all criticisms of Tulsi Gabbard are smears. There are legitimate and important policy-based criticisms of Tulsi Gabbard that I think need to be addressed. But smearing her as a Russian asset, I mean, this just makes people question the legitimacy of good faith critiques that come from the left. So it's frustrating that, you know, at a time when we're trying to move past Hillary Clinton and talk about policy and really focus on the substance, 
she just jumps back in and gets everyone sidetracked and distracted. And it's just, it's so frustrating. Like, I'm so over it. I'm so over Hillary Clinton. Now, she's also hypocritical. And I think that Van Jones on CNN did a good job at kind of pointing out how, like, if you're worried about a Russian disinformation campaign, if you're worried about disinformation, more generally speaking, don't participate in the spread of disinformation yourself. She's playing a very dangerous game. <clears throat> I mean, Hillary Clinton... Uh, if you're concerned about disinformation, if you're concerned that what the Russians do is they, dis they spread disinformation, they get us divided against each other, that is what just happened. Just throw out some information, disinformation, smear somebody. She is Hillary Clinton. She's a legend. She is, she's going to be in the history books. She's a former nominee of our party. And she just came out against a sitting U.S. congresswoman, a decorated war veteran, and somebody who's running for the nomination of our party with just a complete smear and no facts. I, I, she called her Russian asset <clears throat> as a fact, and as you point out, sitting U.S. A, a sitting U.S. Congresswoman. Now, mm -hmm. this is not, this is a very, very dangerous game, and there's a backstory here, and there's two sides to every story. Let's not forget, Tulsi Gabbard was picked out by the Democratic Party establishment and put at the top of the DNC. They thought she was going to be their golden girl, and she got in, in that position the DNC, and she looked around, she saw Debbie Wasserman Schultz and other people, Clinton allies, doing stuff they shouldn't have been doing in the primary, and, yeah. and, and, and Tulsi publicly quit and then yeah. endorsed Bernie Sanders. And it's been payback hell ever since. And that's since. what we are here. So he also kind of said what, you know, I was thinking with regard to the endorsement. This is payback because she endorsed Bernie Sanders over Hillary Clinton. I mean, look, it's not conspiratorial to say that, that Hillary Clinton is holding a grudge against Tulsi Gabbard. The way that politics works is you scratch my back, I scratch yours. You endorse me in this race, I'll, you know, endorse you later on. Uh, I fundraise for you, maybe you endorse me in this race. This is exactly how it works. This is the swamp, for lack of a better word. This is the way that it works. So Tulsi Gabbard, she was kind of the DNC's golden child. She was part of the DNC, but she went against the grain, and they will never let her live that down. They will always criticize her for this. And this is what the establishment does. They look out for their own and they attack anyone who gets out of line, who strays from the flock. So, you know, I absolutely commend Tulsi Gabbard for speaking out here and really challenging the Clintons in a way that few politicians have. You know, this is necessary. People need to stop propping up Hillary Clinton in the media, but they will never learn their lesson. What she says holds weight. And that's just the fact of reality. I don't like that, but what she says is important to a lot of people, you know? So for her to say this, to lob this smear against Tulsi Gabbard, that's completely unsubstantiated. Not only is it disgusting from a moral standpoint because she is slandering Tulsi Gabbard, but it's also harmful and destructive. We're supposed to be committed to facts and statistics and data. But for you to just willy-nilly throw out something that is really an extraordinary claim that requires extraordinary evidence. So for the love of God, I just wish Hillary Clinton would go away. But I mean, I can't see that happening because whenever she says something, it dominates the headlines. And I'm part of the problem for talking about her still. But I mean, I feel like you can't not defend Tulsi Gabbard if this loathsome of a smear is lobbed against her. It's so disgusting, right? Even if this was lobbed against someone who I truly don't like, like Pete Buttigieg, I would have to defend him. Like when Jacob Wool fabricated sexual assault allegations against Pete Buttigieg, even though I dislike him, I still defend him. This is about having integrity. This is about defending people and making sure that when we critique them, we have a policy foundation behind our criticism. But for this, this is low. This is disgusting. I mean, this is nothing more than gutter politics. And Hillary Clinton should be ashamed of herself for, uh, you know, saying this about Tulsi Gabbard. But whatever she says, people just love. She surrounds herself by yes men and yes women. And there's still a lot of those same loyalists in media who praise her whenever she says something. I mean, on The View, I'll be talking about a segment where they uh, all agreed with Hillary Clinton. So, I mean, what she says matters, regardless if we like her or not. So she needs to be more responsible. The fact that she's not shows that she doesn't care about the country. She just, you know, she cares about herself.